Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to today's uh, Light Bytes webinar. Today, um, this is going to be um, focused around controls. Um, we've got a little tagline there to dim or not to dim. Should be able to answer that one fairly <laughs> quickly. Um, right, in terms of controls and, and dimming as well, um, just want to take you through um, a practical um, demonstration of, of what that will give you within a space. It is really important to dim. Um, so it's not a question of whether you should dim or not. Um, of course you should, um, but there are lots of different considerations that you need to make in order to uh, make this work uh, as effectively as possible for you. So if you just see me um, scrolling through these different scenes um, that we have within the space, you can see that the, the whole look and feel of this room is changing instantly. And you can see there we're getting a nice fade between uh, the different scenes that we have set, uh, which is what you would have in real life as well. But I just want to speed that up for you so that you can see more clearly the difference between <clears throat> each of these scenes. So you can see there. And that's all um, through dimming. Uh, and we're dimming different channels separately so that we can um, shift the intensity from certain items to another. Um, for example, you can see uh, above the fireplace here, the picture, and how by dimming some of the surrounding lights and keeping that quite bright, actually you're drawing attention and focus to it. So you can really draw um, your eyes to the important aspects um, of the room itself. Uh, and that's all through dimming and, and scene setting as well. So when you have a space like this, um, quite a large open plan space, um, you're bound to have quite a few different circuits and I'm gonna show you exactly what we're dealing with here so that you can actually comprehend how we might be able to control the space. So first circuit is a light down onto the coffee table. Um, that's coming from all the way um, at the top of this space. We've got a, a beam mounted spotlight which has a, a narrow beam to give you focus onto the flowers there. Um, the second circuit is for ambient lighting. So that's your wall lights and also your perimeter uh, five amp circuit. So these lamps are, are linked into the lighting control system. Um, you're not turning those on individually. Um, they're linked into the lighting so that you can dim them and you can include them as part of your scene setting. Um, I'm looking at these two different levels really as, as one space. I'm not sure you'd really sit down uh, on the sofa here and not want the lighting to be operational in, in the area above you. So we're gonna link those two together. Um, then you've got a second lamp circuit, which is um, really focused around the seating area so that you can get a really uh, a nice um, soft glow uh, and intimacy um, around the seating space. And you can maybe dim down the perimeter lighting or even turn it off um, so that you can create that uh, separate zone. We then have a, a circuit of up lights, uh, which we have to sort of the, the door openings and entries into the room. Um, so that's uh, your accent lighting, which is adding drama and impact. And then we have two circuits of shelf lighting. We've got uh, a back lighting circuit and a front lighting circuit as well, so that we've got the option to create, again, different moods. You then have, um, the picture light here. So this is being lit by two directional lights in the ceiling. So we're not linking that to the picture above the fireplace. You could technically, but actually these are gonna dim, I know, at different rates. And I want to be able to make sure that I get the lighting effect onto the artwork absolutely perfect. So by having them as two separate channels, um, I can just tweak them independently to give us the, the perfect look. Um, right at the top of the space to enhance the, the sense of uh, openness and height, um, we have an uplighting effect on top of the beams. This is using a, a linear LED strip. Um, and obviously, again, you wouldn't want to link that necessarily to the fire amps around your seating space, because although it's giving you a nice ambient light, it's at a totally different level. Uh, and also it's a different type of light source as well. This is um, an LED strip, whereas in your lamps, you're using an LED bulb they have different technology in them, they have different dimming rates. Um, and you might find that if you dim the, that circuit down to 10%, um, the strip lights are still quite intense, whereas your lamps are nearly off. And that's why you might circuit some, some things uh, slightly differently. Uh, and then your, your final uh, circuit is your picture. 
So we've got nine circuits within this room, which is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, nine circuits within a space can lead to what's known as wall acne, um, particularly if you also have um, you know, other equipment on the walls, um, such as uh, security points, uh, air conditioning, blinds, that sort of thing. Um, the problem with, with wall acne is that it doesn't look very nice. Um, but also, how do you ever remember which switch does what? Um, you end up with post-it notes or uh, little stickers next to each switch. Um, in my house, I don't know about everyone else, but I have like two switches <laughs> in a room and I can't remember which one does the pendant, which one does the spotlights. Um, and that's having lived there for five years. So it, get, it does get quite confusing. I think it also is quite... Uh quite relevant when it comes to hotel rooms as well. I don't know how many of us have been staying somewhere and there's switches everywhere and you have no idea what they do and where and, and which room they're even functioning from. So it's, it's often those spaces that I think they, they get so wrong so often. And it, yeah, it, it's it sort of drives you crazy, doesn't it? And you're only there some... for two days, so you have to... <laughs> yeah, we've got some solutions for, for these things. Uh, so we're gonna come on to those. Um, the other thing to, to note uh, for a space like this, uh, which is multi-leveled um, and open plan, is your entry points. Um, you can see from just this one viewpoint, um, nine different entry points to the room. So with conventional dimming, you can actually only dim from one location um, within the room. And any other additional switches that you would want within the space, you'd be able to turn the lights on and off, but you wouldn't be able to adjust um, the light level setting that you have. So um, in here, you are going to be quite limited. <clears throat> Say you had um, the dimmer uh, set uh, by the entry point, which is next to the TV here, uh, the lower ground level. If you came in at one of the upper levels here, you'd be able to turn the uh, lights on and off, but you'd have to come all the way downstairs to the TV to be able to adjust the lighting, um, which is not very practical because it might be that you're coming in during the day and the last time you were using the lights was late at night and you had you know, quite a low level setting. So it, the, the requirements are totally different between uh, late evening and during the day. Um, and that would be quite frustrating that you would have to you know, come all the way downstairs to, to do those adjustments. So both those two, um, issues, number of circuits, and also control points um, lead us to a scene setting system. And this really is the most practical way of controlling rooms where you have more than four circuits. I think four, um, four dimmers on the wall is, is just about manageable. Once you go beyond that, it's, it's really difficult to remember which one does what. And it's also, um, you know, the fact that you've got quite a few switches on the wall that complicates things. Uh, with the scene setting control, what you're doing is you're combining all of those nine different circuits into preset moods or scenes. So um, it could be that you have uh, four different settings. Uh, you've got a day scene, afternoon scene, evening and night scene. And these are all settings which are um, created with the help of your lighting designer on site once the um, once the project's been completed so that we can see the effect of all the lighting and they are saved here so uh, for each entry point into the room you might have a keypad and then you've got the, the same settings there so it turns on the whole space to your favorite setting and the correct level for that particular time of day and you've also got an all off button um, which is really useful particularly in hotel rooms as Beck mentioned yeah. <laughs> when you go into bed it takes five seconds it doesn't take five minutes to work out how to turn the lights off um, so that's uh, really useful. There is a definitely, particularly in the UK, it's different in the Middle East. I think there's much more openness to using a control system and it tends to be used on pretty much every project, isn't it, Bex? Uh, I would, yeah, hundred percent of our projects, I would say would have them, but there is certainly, a, uh, there is sort of this, this level of, of clients that's had control systems in the past they've spent a lot of money on them and then they've never really utilized them in a way that we do as, as lighting consultants. We, we, we go and commission the scheme at the end and, and program everything for the scenes. And a lot of the time they might have this fear to reuse it. And obviously 
some of the things that you've written here are just sort of the tip of the iceberg of, of why they may not want to use a, a control system again. 